All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward, Brandon Saad, Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Brandon, how good was your goalie tonight? Yeah, he was unbelievable. Uh, it's something we're not going to get at that point in the game if he wasn't in net, so he did a great job back there. Peter Bob, The Athletic. Yeah, I was wondering, I know, um, I know Miko scored the winner, but did, did Gruby get that chain you guys have been giving out at the end of games? He did, actually, yeah. It's something where... Uh, we didn't have our best night in front of him, but he made some huge key saves for us, uh, changed some momentum swings, so he deserved it. Michael Spencer, CBS4. Hey, Brandon, can you take us through that first goal and, and just how big was that to to get the first one because you knew Vegas was going to come out flying tonight? Yeah, it always feels good. You know, I think uh, G made a great pass up the middle where uh, their D kind of got pinch in and I had some space and just found a way to the net. So uh, it was a great heads up play by G. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Brandon, I know this is not the most important thing right now, but Grubauer uh, was named a finalist for the Vezina yesterday, and he just uh, outdueled one of the other finalists. Just talk about his game and, and his performance today. Yeah, it's well-deserving. You know, we're not at this point. Uh, we, didn't, we wouldn't have the season we had without him. Uh, we all know how important he is. He gives us all confidence up front. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much all you can say. He deserves it. He's a great goaltender, and obviously you can see that on display tonight. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Yeah, Brandon, it seemed like you got Vegas' uh, best game here tonight. If you could just talk about that and, and obviously going to Vegas now and make a 2 nothing lead. Yeah, that's, uh, we knew that they were going to come out with a better effort tonight. And um, even though we didn't play our best, it's a big character win to, to kind of hold on and finish it off there on the power play. So I don't, obviously it feels good. We're going to touch upon things we have to improve and then take it one game at a time there in Vegas because obviously every game gets more important. Let's take two more here for Brandon. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Brandon, what was your view on the on Miko's last goal? Did you see it go in and just kind of take me through the next rush of the few moments after it? Yeah, it's just a great shot. I saw it right away. He beat him high glove there. Um, they got him the puck over on that side. He had time and space and obviously he finished the job. So uh, I think I was uh, one of the first ones jumping onto the ice, celebrating with Gruby. So that's a big moment for our team. And last one here, Ryan O'Halloran, in Denver Post. Hey, Brandon, what were they doing in the second and third periods to bottle up you guys offensively? Well, they, they're a good team. You know, they do a good job of creating turnovers and kind of playing our end. So um, we know they're going to do that. But I think for us, it's what uh, we didn't do, you know, with with – playing simple, getting pucks in deep, getting on the four check like we did in the first period where we had success. Uh, we got a little too cute with it. Uh, weren't supporting each other too much. And then they create turnovers and have success. So uh, it's more about what we can control. All right. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks, guys. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche forward Miko Rantanen. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Miko, two things. Uh, to start, just what are the emotions having that big of a moment on such a big stage? And then also just what can you say about Grubauer's performance tonight for you guys? Yeah, I have to talk about Gruby first. You know, he he bailed us out, out, out today. I think he, he had a really, really good game, and he, he, uh, he kept us in the game. You know, it's his... He was basically the reason why we, where we got to OT, and and uh, then it's good our special teams step up there. But uh, Gruby, Gruby was awesome, and uh, for sure a best player in the game. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Hey Miko, the big line. Uh, I don't want to say struggled, but you didn't have uh, a pointer or anything through regulation. How did you guys just uh, 
you know, talk about sticking with it. And then uh, obviously you got the big one there at the end. Yeah, we, uh, we knew it wasn't going to be easy series. Uh, they're, they were second in the regular season just behind us. We tied in points. So, so we knew there's going to be tough, uh, tough, tough periods and maybe some sometimes tough games like today. You know, we, we couldn't really create that much offense, but we also we know uh, we have to be responsible in the D zone. And uh, I think we gave us some chances and Gruby bailed us out, bailed us out a couple times. But uh, that's that's what we have to do if we if we not feeling it offensively, we have to bear down defensively and make sure we don't give up anything. Rick Sadowski, NHL.com. Hi, Miko. You're outshot pretty badly, especially the second and third periods. Just one, and that doesn't happen very often with you guys. What were they doing to make it so difficult? Yeah, like I said, they're a, they're a good team, and and uh, I think we were. I think we were not playing our best game either. You know, uh, we we gave them a little bit too much time in the in the ozone, and maybe our our uh, reloads from the forwards and gaps gap ups from the D wasn't that great, and that's how they got in the ozone pretty easily. So uh, so it was a it wasn't our best game. We know that, uh, but uh, that's what we need. We need we need to find a way even we, even when we don't play our best. We'll take two more here for Miko Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Miko, you kind of just said it there, but not playing your best game and still coming away with a victory. What kind of confidence does that guys give? Does that give you guys going into Vegas for Game Three? Yeah, it does. You know, uh, if I look at the, you know, the the two games we played, first one we played really well, and then not not our best game, but still find a way. I think that's what we've been doing the whole whole year. Sometimes we we haven't been feeling it, and groovy has been playing awesome, and. And stealing some wins for us like today, so but that's what you that's what you need if you if you want to win the cup. And last one here, Mark Spector, Sportsnet. Yeah, Miko. Of course, the penalty and overtime. Um, Vegas wasn't happy with the call. They thought that Pete DeBoer said it was a soft call. Uh, just your thoughts. Uh, maybe just tell us what happened on that play. Yeah, well, I was trying to get out to point, and and uh, I think it's it's just all over the league. The the call is that if you slash the stick slash the other guy's stick out of his hands or or uh, break his stick it's it's always a penalty and uh, I know I'm a pretty strong guy too so I can hold on to my stick but that was pretty pretty hard slash so so uh, I don't think I would purposefully uh, like uh, drop my stick in the D zone I don't know who does that so so uh, that's what it was all right thank you Miko thank you All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche goaltender Philip Grubauer. We'll start with questions in English and we'll finish with a question in German. We'll start with Peter Ba, the athletic. Hey, Grubi, um, Sauter told us that that you were given the chain after the game for, for the best player. I guess, what was that moment like in the locker room? Who gave it to you and what did, what did they say to you when that happened? Um, KL gave it to me. Um, no, it was just overall. Um, Tough game, but we found a way to to win it, and that's what we mean, need. Um, obviously, a huge kill at the end there of uh, the third period, and then power play stepped up and 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 won us the game. So, any other questions for Philip? Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Philip, when you win in overtime like that, how big of a relief is it for it to be over? Yeah, I mean, it's it's huge. You know, like uh, it's it's a difference if you. If you lead the series to nothing, or if you uh, go into Vegas one-one, so um, we knew they were going to come out with their best game. Um, their backs are against the wall a little bit, so um, we found a way to win and, and pull that one off for sure. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Philip, you guys haven't had a lot of games this year where you were uh, where you guys were outshot like that. But to take away a, a win in a game where you guys, you know, didn't have your best game, just what kind of confidence does that give you heading into Vegas? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen too often. Uh, I can't even remember the last time. Well, it might have been in Vegas. Uh, we got outshot a little bit, but for the most part, we, we do an unbelievable job of keeping guys to the outside and not allowing too many shots. I mean, today was an ex exception, but we're going to make sure next game doesn't happen again. Michael Spencer, CBS4. Philip, you kind of touched on this yesterday, but when you're going up against a guy on the other side like Flower, who obviously is one of three finalists for the Venza, is there extra satisfaction in, in coming away with a victory in a game like this? 
Uh, not really. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm focused on winning in every situation out there, and then the next situation and the situation after. So, um, yeah, it's nice to win, but it doesn't matter who is who is in that um, in that moment. We'll take two more here for Philip in English. Mark Kisla, Denver Post. Philip, uh, when you're facing that many shots, it, it, is it fun? Do you get in the rhythm, or is what, what's the level of anxiety there? Uh, anxiety level zero. Um, it doesn't matter if I face 40, 50 or just 10 shots. Um, the approach is always the same. Um, I never, never change anything. Um, obviously, those games are a little bit tougher if you get less shots and you get a little bit into the groove if you get a little bit more. So it was really good today. Um, got a little bit more than usual, but um, I won't complain. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Phil, can you just walk through what you saw in that last power play and, and what, or on, on Vegas's last power play, where I think you had like those four saves right at the end. Um, what did you see there? What were the guys around you doing well? Can you just walk through that whole process? Yeah, I, honestly, I can't even remember. It's just uh, we did an unbelievable job keeping them to the outside and getting in the lanes and, and blocking the necessary shots and um, found a way to, to get it out, I believe, and uh, that was good. And we'll end with one here for Philip in German, Stefan Herget, NHL.com, Germany. Yeah, hallo Philipp, Glückwunsch zum Sieg. Um, kannst du mir auf Deutsch noch mal ein kurzes Fazit sagen zu deiner Leistung heute? Und was mich auch interessieren würde, ob du deinen rechten Pfosten schon gestreichelt hast. Ja, hallo Derek, Stefan. Um, ja, Philipp, um, habe ich gestreichelt. Um, war mein linker Pfosten, war mein rechter Pfosten. Ein bisschen Glück gerade dazu, aber war hart erkämpfter Sieg. Ähm, war nicht unser bestes Spiel, aber wir haben einen Weg gefunden, damit wir das Spiel gewinnen. Und jetzt wäre es interessant, äh, wenn wir nach Vegas, ähm, wenn wir nach Vegas gehen. Ähm, die werden wahrscheinlich auch wieder über die Feuerwehr rauskommen und müssen wir wieder gegenhalten und einen Weg finden, das Spiel zu gewinnen. All right, thank you, Philip. Ja, yeah, thanks. All right, we'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, to start, just what did you think of Phillips' performance and how important is it in the postseason to have a goalie who can maybe steal a game for you um, here and there? Well, that last part of that question is obvious. <laughs> um, it's really important. And I thought, his outs I thought his performance was exceptional. I mean... You know, we, we played a, a good first period. I liked our first period. We were skating, drawing penalties, winning a lot of races, winning a lot of puck battles. And in the final 40 minutes, we didn't do that. Um, I, th I thought we started to come a few times in the third period, but we gave up the home run play against a few times. Like they got in behind us for some breakaways. breakaways. We got caught on our four check, too many turnovers, but second period i think they won every race and every puck battle and and um, we ended up playing in our zone almost the whole period so um you know but the guys guys still had the belief in the locker room we got a little better in the third and came out in, in overtime and we're ready to play and we, we we draw another penalty and power play was really good tonight it gets us two big goals and it just seemed to me like we we didn't execute very well and puck was bouncing around a lot tonight and um, we needed Groovy in a big way tonight, and he showed up for us. Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. Hey, Jared, big penalty kill at the end of the third period there. How impressed were you with your first and second groups in that situation? Well, they were good. I mean, I, I thought that penalty kill, we kept them to the outside. They had a couple looks off the flanks. Um, I guess that's, you know, the best you can hope for against a strong power play like that they have. And, um, Again, Groovy was good in goal. They get they had the clears. When we got it on our tape, we got it down. Um, the goal they had in the first period, we had a failed clear, and then we didn't protect the seam, and they scored on that. Our guys learned from that. Did a nice job in the seam a couple times in that late one in the third. And so, I mean, that was a huge kill because we had just had a power play too, and we never got anything going on that one. I didn't like that power play. Puck was bouncing around all over the place on that one, and we just didn't execute. And, um, 
but they come, their power play steps up. Penalty kill steps up at the end of the third, and their power play steps up in overtime. So, uh, huge performance from our special teams tonight to, to help uh, help us get the win. Michael Spencer, CBS4. Jared, maybe not surprisingly, but on the other side, they weren't too happy with the uh, penalty call there in, in overtime. They called it soft and maybe a little bit of embellishment. What were your thoughts on it? I think I think it's that's an easy one to call for me because he didn't have to do it. And if Miko's going out to the point to cover the point, the puck's out there and he knocks his stick out of his hands and he doesn't have it, it could end up in our net going the other way because he's going out without a stick against a skilled D-man. And it's going to create a chance coming that way. So, uh, I mean, I thought they were pretty consistent in what they called. Like we got called wrapping up a guy, um, new hook wrapping up a guy in, in, off the rush. They got called again right after that, wrapping up a guy in the corner. I mean, you could tell they were calling the slashes. We, we Mac drove the net one time. He called the slash, and we got nailed for one. I mean, I, I don't know. I think you in that situation, I would want that called. I mean, I know it's overtime, but I mean, if, if we if we're going out to that point with no stick, we're in trouble. I'll take two more here for Jared. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, Brandon Saad got the scoring started. He's obviously had a goal now in his last five games. Is this what you had envisioned from him in the playoffs when you guys acquired him last off season? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a guy that's performed in big moments his whole career and, and seems to get better as the season goes on. So, um, you know, right, right out of the, right out of the, the, the COVID break and um, he was an impact player for us. He's finding a way to get on the score sheet every night late in the season and in the playoffs and scoring big goals for us. And he, he had some jump early in the game. I think, uh, Looked like he, he lost his legs a little bit as the game went on, but I mean, he was skating and jumping the holes in the neutral zone and, and creating some some chances off the rush. And he's, you know, again, I thought tonight he was real strong on the walls and made sure pucks got out, and um, you know, which we needed to relieve some pressure, especially in the second and third period. Last one here, Kate. What did you think of that? whole line of sods with uh, Justin Natushkin. Great start. I thought Natushkin skated, you know, really well. And he had some jump in his legs. Um, as the game went on, they started spending a little more time in their zone. They had the one shift where they got hemmed in at the start of the third period, where it was a shooting gallery for uh, Vegas. They blocked a couple big shots and tried to keep it to the outside. Um, so I was a little bit hot and cold with that line, but I was the same way with the rest of our team, you know, like we had a good first period and obviously the last 40 minutes weren't exactly what the way we would have drawn them up. You know, I think, uh, Groovy steals us out one and, uh, we got to regroup and take a look at the tape and make sure that we make some adjustments in, in, in areas that we need to get better at going into Vegas. All right. Thank you, Jared. Thank you.